Hello and welcome to another exclusive GoodyReader.com review video. This is Peter. Today we're going to do a quick review of the Kindle 4. This is the 2012 model. Uh, you can see it has uh, all new black housing as opposed to the old Kindle 4 which has the silver and kind of bronze housing. Um, just going to get into some 360 of the hardware and then we'll dive a little deeper into it. The housing is pretty much exactly the same other than the color. It still has the page turns uh, back and forward on the left, back and forward on the right. It's got the uh, back button, keyboard button, up, down, left, and right, OK, navigation buttons, more button, and home button. Kindle is now written in white instead of black to better contrast the housing color. Turning it over, you still have the hard rubber backing, very nice quality contact points for any sort of cases that may need to utilize that. Nothing on the left, top, and right. All the fun stuff's happening down here. You have micro USB, LED indicator light, and a power button or a standby button. If you press it once, it'll send it into standby, press it again to wake it up. We're not going to dive too much into the tech specs of this device because it is pretty much exactly the same as the uh, Kindle 4 before it. It's a 6 inch e ink pearl. Um, it's got decent resolution. Uh, all the specs are pretty much the same. They really are. So we're just going to show you some of the subtle differences. The differences that this really is advertised to have are that they have 15% faster page turns. And we're going to see in a second if that actually takes effect. And the text is supposed to be a lot crisper. Not sure what they really mean by that because they haven't really upped the resolution. Maybe they've smoothed, smoothed things over. I'm not sure. But nevertheless, let's dive into uh, Night Road by Kristen Hanna just to get an idea of what exactly 15% faster page turning looks like. So we're going to zoom as much in there as we can possibly do on a portrait orientation device and we'll start uh, going forward into the book. Skip past the dedication. There we go. It is not touchscreen like the Kindle Touch and the Kindle Paperwhite, so all the navig all the uh, interaction with the device will have to be done with all of the buttons at the bottom. So, on its own, you won't really have a clear idea of a head-to-head. Uh, battle between this Kindle 4 and the previous Kindle 4. For that, you can go to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash goodyreader to see the comparison between the two. On its own, you're not really going to tell. If you were to use a Kindle 4 and then put it away, bring out this Kindle 4, the new one, and ask yourself how much faster 15% page turn is, you won't really be able to tell. It's They're, they're fast. You can see it's really quick every sixth page or so it does a full black refresh but that's not really a good indication of how much faster this is so uh, it is faster to some degree a very small degree as we've showed you in our comparison video you can check that out um, on our channel uh, other than that it's not that it's not a significant night and day difference also, the text is supposed to be crisper. Now, what does that mean exactly? Let's get some focus going here. Now, I don't really see if that's necessarily crisper. Once again, you'd have to have both of these next to each other in order for you to get a good idea. So, um, we found that the text isn't so much crisper, but it's it's darker. It's more of a, a harsher contrast, which is good. It's more of a black on white than a, a black on kind of gray. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a slight improvement. Um, one of the better things about this is that they've reduced the price, uh, depending on the vendor you choose to purchase this from, about 20 to $30. So you are actually getting the same Kindle, but improved at a lesser price, which is a, which is a pretty good thing in my book. Uh, you'd have to press up and down on this, on the uh, control pad at the bottom here, in order to navigate to get to uh, where you want to be in the page to make notes and highlights and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you'll see here that 
we, we we're now over here at backpack and then you can go to with and as you go to all these uh, different words while using the keypad down below uh, it's a little more difficult because you can't just touch anywhere you want to go uh, navigate to on the screen it will define everything right here as you kind of go along uh, notebook and so forth um, to make notes you want to press enter to start the note you can see here start highlight and you can press forward to uh, you know create the highlight you want press enter again to kind of end that highlight and there you go same thing with kind of notes um, you can see it's underlined it's not really highlighted with a uh, kind of a gray opaque uh, full highlight much like mo most e-readers do uh, we're not going to show you too much with that because this is really just an e-reading device. We're not going to go into, you're not going to buy this to make notes and annotations and highlights and stuff like that. It's a good feature to have, but that's not the primary use of this. Uh, if you wanted to make notes and highlights and annotations and save them as text files, you might want to get like an Icarus Pocket or an Icarus uh, Excel in order to do that. This is mostly an e-reading device. Um... This hasn't changed much, as I said before, um, from the previous generation or the previous model of the Kindle 4. So you're not going to see anything that you've never seen before, really, except for the black housing. Uh, we're just going to open up a D&D &D monster manual or kind of go-to complex PDF. Just to give you an idea of how this thing handles PDF experiences. So, page turns are fast, even on this 100 MB file. This is a big file. It's a really big file and this loaded extremely fast. So you see here, if you press the more button, which is this guy right here next to the home button, it's kind of like a right click, it gives you options, lets you know what to do, what you can do. Uh, let's go to zoom and contrast because there's not too many reflow options, so to speak. You can see here you're now in a kind of a preview mode so you can utilize and navigate this box of zoom to where you want to go press OK and that's what you that's what you have there so you can kind of scroll left and right a much better experience than the Barnes & Noble simple touch with uh, glow light that's for sure although you do see some clipping because there aren't many reflow options however it's not the worst thing in the world you can manage it quite well and uh, Truthfully, even with it um, full screen, it's actually pretty readable. It's not too bad. It's making good use of the six-inch screen. I know some uh, some readers, when you open up PDFs, it, it formats it weird, and the margins and the the height is really small. So it almost looks like just a little page all zoomed out. But this one actually pretty much goes edge to edge. You get a good you can get a good uh, idea of uh, what's on the page. Uh, as we showed you, you can zoom in, um, you can change the contrast, there's not too much else. This, once again, this is an e-reader for e-books. You're not going to have the most comfortable of PDF experiences on it. And we'll show you one more here, which is a newspaper, a kind of go-to newspaper. So you can see here, it's kind of the same thing. It's got a decent amount of... Uh, uh, con it's got it's got really good contrast actually I shouldn't uh, discredit it it's got really good contrast the text is very nice and um, it is very readable and even though there you might need 2020 for this but um, what you can do once again zoom in contrast find that sweet spot really find what suits you the best you see this zoom 200 percent actually this is the page if you press ok this is what your e-reader screen will display so this one's actually looking like it goes edge to edge so this might be the best one for us there you go so although you see clipping here it's a newspaper so we read up and down so um, if you go like that you actually can read to the bottom of the column go back to the top go to the second column and then scroll down so you can see that um, even with newspapers you will be able to get the job done but as we said before it's not the greatest for PDFs it just it, that's the reality of it it's an e-reader first and foremost so we showed you a book we showed you PDF and we showed you a uh, newspaper so uh, what we want to do next is show you the store.
So we're connected via Wi-Fi. Let's go to the Kindle store and see what's there. Nothing has changed. Once again, you're still dealing with Amazon.com. You still have the same layout. Um, you go to books. Uh, one thing that th has changed, actually, is that they have 1.6 million books now. I think the last time we reviewed the Kindle 4, there was probably 1.2, 1.3. So it's come a long way. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing's really changed here. We're, we're showing you really the, the, the biggest changes on its own is the heart is the uh the housing it's black it is noticeably black because it is black software wise nothing's really changed page turns are uh advertised to be quicker text is uh, advertised to be sharper and more crisp um battery life hasn't really been extended resolution hasn't been increased storage hasn't been uh increased you can still utilize the cloud for all of uh your storage needs if you run out there are there is no expandable memory unlike the uh kobo glow and the um nook simple touch so you can expand it you cannot expand it with uh sd cards or anything like that uh if you have more than one kindle you see this is my fourth we have about 15 here at uh, goody reader you can transfer your kindle content onto your device uh, you're still dealing with, uh, funnily enough, an experimental <laughs> web browser, even on the Kindle Paperwhite, uh, which is, uh, I believe, the fifth generation. It is still experimental, but uh, yeah, um, the thing is pretty much just a 2012 update of the previous Kindle 4, which is good. I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about it. It's just that on its own, you're not going to see... Uh, you won't pick it up and say, wow, this is much better than the one before, because it isn't. It's just changed a little bit. The price has been reduced, and the page turns are quicker, which are all positive notes. So you're in wrapping up, you're not going to see a night and day difference between this Kindle 4 and the one sold last year in 2011 um, and most of 2012. This one is just to, you know, give the Kindle a fresher kind of uh, facelift and give you all the Kindle experience and more books since then at a lesser price. So overall, um, I really think it, it was a good idea and it was a good uh, direction they could uh, go in um, uh, for the 2012 lineup, although it completely astonishes me why they'd get rid of the Kindle Touch because that was an amazing device. It had touchscreen, it had stereo speakers at the bottom, um, audiobooks, text-to-speech, all that kind of stuff. Um, it got rid of it all together. So they just have this guy and the Paperwhite for e-readers. So um, in wrapping up, again, it's a good idea. I really like it. Uh, you can purchase these at www.shoppyreaders.com. And uh, for all the latest news, reviews, previews, and upcoming event coverage such as CES and so much more in 2013, visit our website at goodyreader.com. If you want to visit the blog, have a quick look at all of our articles, uh, goodyreader.com slash blog. And of course, if you have a tablet and you want uh, access to all the apps on some tablets that don't have access outside the USA, for example, the Kindle Fire, you can visit our website at goodyreader.com slash apps either way full service website to suit all of your e-reader needs for goody reader this is peter